Sit down, honey. I'm doing my mom's paper. Shalom, you guys. We're back again. Sorry for last week. I have been running myself ragged working and I was exhausted and I required a day of rest. So last Sabbath we just didn't get to our lessons, but have no fear. Sabbath studies are here. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Let's introduce ourselves. All right, why you got that crazy ball in your head? <laughs> you well. you I like it well. like this. Okay. She likes it like this. All right. So, Kamari. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Sit up. Kim Zones. Speak up. Kim Zones, the killer. It's my cousin. Okay, today, not yesterday, possibly not tomorrow, Kim Zones the Killer. All right, Ariel, go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, uh, yeah, the pink princess. That's why I'm wearing a pink bow. All right, the uh, pink bow is falling apart. Ariel, the pink princess, and I'm uh, Sister Whitney, Sister Witness, Sister Katora, Sister whatever you want to call me. I don't really care as long as you put some respect on my name. So, like I said, um, today we're going to be talking about the fiery furnace. Um, this lesson coincides um, with the book that I wrote, The Three Hebrew Boys, Three Little Hebrew Boys and the Big Bad Wolf. And this lesson will also be one of the free lessons, um, study guides, since it's included with the book. Anyways, we're going to get right into it. Shalom to whoever's watching with us. I can't see from that far mm -hmm. away. Um, we've got a really cool art project, science, RT, fun creative project that's going to follow after this so hopefully you guys will be able to stick around for the next uh, lesson that, or the next video that we're going to do all right so anyways so it's a common misconception that in serving the most high that everything that we experience in life will be wonderful and it'll be rainbows and sunny days but the reality of that is that that's not true Kamari, can you think of a reason why that's not true? That every day that you live is just going to be peaches and peach cobbler and ice cream and cotton candy. Why is life not just like that? Because you're not supposed Speak to. Speak up. Because you're not supposed to build your treasure in earth. You're supposed to build it in heaven. That's right. Our treasure's not on this earth. Ariel, what do you think? Why is, there, why is it that life isn't just full of chocolate chip cookies and popcorn <laughs> with ice cream drizzles. You have an answer? And because we're not supposed because life is just beautiful and you're supposed to live in the kingdom and not in the life. Um, and all oh, it's because that's where I guess I guess fire's gonna come here or something. Okay, so you guys are kind of on the right spot. It's a little bit off over here somewhere, but we're gonna ring back. All right. So the reason why is that the um, reality is different from this concept that life is full of just good things is that um, for two reasons. The first reason is for a recompense of sin. And this doesn't really affect you guys as much as it affects me and everybody who's watching or all the other children who are watching their parents as well. Because since you guys have come to the Almighty while you guys are young, you guys will make a lot less bad decisions like I have made or your dad has made or any of the other uh, Hebrew parents have made. And so when you make wrong choices in life, and you transgress the commandments, as a lot of people do. Do most people serve the most high? Do most people make bad choices in our sinners? They, 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 they serve Satan, the bad guy. Sit down, please. If you cannot sit down, I'm going to have you move your chair way over there on the other side. Stay in your seat. Pop a squat. All right. So, um, where was I at? Okay. So, because of that, there's a thing called a recompense for sin. Everything that you do has of recompense. There is nothing that you can do that you think the Almighty will see you, that He does not see. Everything that we do has a recompense. Whether it be good, whether it will recompense, it's more like a term that's used for bad. But if you do good, you will get rewarded righteously. If you do bad, 
you'll get rewarded with chastisement or punishment. So because you guys have come to serve the Almighty Young, you're going to have a lot less to repay for, a lot less recompense, right? Saying, I repent, is not a get-out-of-jail-free card, and a lot of people feel like it is. Um, if you turn to Romans, turn to Romans. Romans is two. Romans 2. Vamanos, muchacha. Muchacha. Can you just buy me a new book, please? Why? I want to just slam down my book page. You want to see the terms? You're going to pass it. You're going to pass it. You're going to pass it. Not me. Two. One, two. Two. Dos. Uno, dos. Uno, dos. Uno, dos. Uno, dos. Uno, dos. Romans two, six. Uno plus uno. Oh, I think because it's not King James. That's what it is. Go ahead and read that. Sorry, guys. I do have the right thing, but it's not. I wrote this one. is not King James. This one is uh, NIV translation. Go ahead. Who will redent to every man according to his deeds? So who will render to every man according to his deeds? And the NIV says, Yah will repay each person according to what they have done. So, like I was saying, anything you do, you will repay. And then Galatians 6 says, Be not deceived, Yah is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. So as we've discussed previously, Yah sits high and he looks low, and there's nothing that we can do, not even in our most secret, secret corner, not underneath the ocean, not in outer space, not on Mount Everest, not in the crater of volcano, not in St. Herman's cave at the Blue Pole. There's nothing that we can do. There's no place that we can go to where we can get away with sin and think that Almighty has not seen it. He may not punish us right then and there, but he sees it and there will be a recompense. Either you get recompensed on this earth and Yah chastises you and he loves you like sons, like we've talked about before. Sit up, please. And um, in Corinthians, or you get chastisement and or you don't get chastised on this earth and then you go to judgment and then you go to the lake of fire. So Matthew twelve and thirty six, go to Matthew twelve thirty six. I have a question. Yes, sir. If you get chastisement on this earth chastisement. Chastisement on this earth that from my most high does not mean you still get judged for it in heaven? Uh, well, I, I think it will be, like, brought up, but if y'all loves you like a child, right, and he deals with you on it, he's dealing with you on it so that you don't continue to make that mistake. So, let's use an example. Let's say Nava steals a cookie, right? I see Nava, but I never say anything to Nava. Do you think Nava's going to do it again? Why do you think Nava's going to do it again, Arya? Because. She thinks it's good because she sees you, you and then she, you don't say nothing, so she would do it again. And I know if you keep don't say nothing, but if you said nothing, no, don't do that, she won't do it again. Or if she does it again, y'all will punish her. Okay, Kamari? Mm -hmm. Because, sit up please. Because if you know that 
not did it, and she doesn't see that you know about it, and you don't say nothing about it, then she's going to be like, I'm so sneaky, I could do it again. Yeah. You're both are right. So, people, and we do this all the time, right? Back in, in like, long ago in the Bible, a lot of times people would sin, and then there would be a punishment, like, right away. But when Yah delays the punishment, people think they're getting away with it. So, Nava steals the cookie, and I don't say anything to her. She thinks she got away with it. So, she says, I stole one cookie today. Tomorrow, I'm going to steal two cookies. And then the next day, she's going to steal three cookies. And she's going to keep this pattern of stealing, thinking that she's getting away with it, when in reality, she's not. Right? And, and then the next thing is, since she's such little, she doesn't know. Like, if she steals way too many cookies, there's going to be no more left. Right. And then I'm really going to know. But, so that's why Yah deals with us while we're here. He recompenses us, right? He, or sorry, he chastises us while we're here so we don't keep making the same sins over and over and over again because if we keep making the same sins over and over and over again we're candidates to go to the lake of fire so now nava steals the cookie right and i said nava no 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 don't steal the cookie right now it's like hmm i didn't like the way that I felt i'm not going to steal the cookie anymore then nava doesn't steal the cookie right and she makes good choices from then on and she may be tempted to steal the cookie again but she's going to remember Last time I sold a cookie, I got in trouble, and I didn't like it, right? So that's the purpose of chastisement. Matthew. Or next thing is your own chastisement. Uh, like you know something's wrong, and you, and you stop yourself from doing it. Yep. That's called your conscience. And so when you uh, when there's sin that you know you're not supposed to be doing, and you keep doing it over and over and over again, the Bible says your conscience is seared with a hot iron. That means your conscience doesn't work anymore. So if I if I steal from the store and I get away with it, and I steal from the store and I get away with it, and I steal from the store and I get away with it, and I steal from the store and I get away with it, eventually I'm not even gonna feel bad about stealing from the store. I'm just gonna. That means that in the beginning I had a conscience. And I was like, oh, that's not really the good thing to do. And then I do it so much, and I get away with it so much that it doesn't even bother me anymore. I still, I just walk in the store and just steal stuff. Like, it's just the thing to do for me. And so that's what it means when your conscience is seared. Seared with a hot iron it means that it's not working good that anymore. That means it's sealed. Seared, like it's burned, like it's broken. Okay, Matthew 12. Matthew 12? Yep, 36. You're already there. 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they they shall give accountants therefore in the day there of judgment. But I say unto you, every idle word that a man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. There is no getting away. So it's important that we spend our lives making less mistakes and not more. And this is why it's important to understand that you guys are so blessed. Like I look at my grandparents and I look at more, more specifically my grandfather. When my grandfather, when her pop up was young, he was mean. Oh, he was so mean. And I look at him now and I see how he's suffering and I know he's repaying for all of those mean things that he did to a lot of people when he was young. So you guys are blessed. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it. You're like, I can't celebrate Christmas, and I can't celebrate Halloween, and I can't do this, and I have to keep the Sabbath, and I can't go here, and I can't wear that, and I can't eat that. And I know sometimes it feels, hold on, hold on. I know sometimes it feels really restrictive, but you have to know, like Kamari said, our kingdom's not of this world, right? Our kingdom's in heaven. So yes, we're restricted now, but it's because we're waiting to get something so much better. Okay, let Ariel speak, and then you can say something. Go ahead. What were you going to say? And then some people just like, I meant that I can not eat pork, and then I can't eat meat, and then I can't eat pork, and then I can't eat this, that, and everything. Yep, some people are upset, but there's a reason why. Go ahead, puppies. And this is why when we talk about one of the stories that we had, What's about the tight space when you try to serve the line? That's why people go the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm, the straight and narrow. That's why it's so hard to serve the Almighty because it's so hard because you have to go through a lot.
lot of things in my mind mm -hmm. to turn to all my They brought the eye of the needle, said easier for a camel to get through the eye of the needle, which I which has been explained to me as the eye of the needle was like if you imagine like a gate or whatever, the wall around a city the concrete wall, brick wall around the city, and it was a small little opening that it was easy for a person to more or less walk through, but it would be hard for a camel. And that kept people from bringing or stealing a bunch of merchandise or goods or stuff all at once. They could only steal a little bit because they could only take what they could carry versus taking what they could load onto a camel. That's how it's been explained to me. I don't necessarily know if it's true. There's no biblical account of it. Yes. Okay, so is you're playing with a cuticle, you have to stop doing that. What's a cuticle? A cuticle is the um, skin around your nail. Mm -hmm. That's your cuticle bed. And then mommy used to have a bad habit of biting her nails and playing with her cuticles, and then it gets infected and gets like a little bump and pus. All right, so anyways, so it's important that you guys adhere to your parents, right? Listen to your mom and dad. Listen to your mom and dad, right? Because if you have righteous parents, we've been there, we've done that, and we know what we're talking about. And it seems like just being mean but we're not trying to be mean we're trying to keep you from making the same mistakes so if you stole and your parents get on you and you're grounded and you're like they're so mean it wasn't even that big of a deal they're trying to keep you from getting your conscience here with a hot iron they're trying to keep you from ending up in jail they're trying to keep you from getting shot they're trying to keep you from making bad mistakes that lead to worse mistakes what may seem small now can manifest itself into bigger and worse things later down the road so listen to your parents commandment number four is Honor thy mother and father. It's the first commandment with us. Are you the Kimara? right our parents didn't serve the almighty but we do so we're trying to stop the generational curses we're like let's stop this craziness that's going on and we're trying to pass on all of our knowledge to you guys so that you guys can be bigger and stronger and better than us and then when you guys have children so like, Please. we'll treat them more better than you guys have treated us it's not about treating y'all been treated good man i'm talking about y'all eating real nice and living real comfortable it's not about treating but just the knowledge and the understanding. Yeah, okay. Like, you know, we're trying to set up a kingdom or, you know, a dynasty or a way of life for you guys that is different where we live. We're trying to set up a lifestyle that has Israelite customs from the jump. You know, you guys have never experienced some of these things. Like, you've never celebrated Christmas. You have never celebrated Halloween. And so we're trying to take away the curses that come with those things. And then hopefully you guys will continue these things on with your children and that we can have a righteous, holy generations. Sound good? Okay. And the second reason is that Satan wants to do everything he possibly can to keep you from getting into the kingdom. So the first reason is recompense. The second reason is Satan's like, uh-uh, I don't want y'all going to the kingdom. So 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion. Walk about seeking whom he may devour. So you guys can imagine like a lion just, you know, out there in the savannah, right? And he's walking around. He's looking, man. He's looking for something to eat. And you've got all these people living their lives. They're casually doing whatever. And the lion's just looking for one opportunity to get one person. And that's the way Satan is, right? Satan's just waiting. He's waiting to see Ariel not wearing her scarf and not praying enough. And he's going to get her. He's waiting to see Ar Kamari uh, playing too many video games and not paying attention and not reading his Bible. And he's going to get Kamari. That's what Satan does. Satan doesn't want us to get into the kingdom. So he does everything within his power to make us sin, to make us trip, to have us make mistakes, to make us be in discord, to make us... What do you mean by trip? Like, like, uh, just like make like little mistakes, like trying to fall. Like, say you're walking in righteousness, and then uh, metaphorically walking in righteousness, 
and then you trip would be like you making you stumbling and making a transgression all right you're doing really well you haven't lied for a long time and then you get in a situation and you're not really paying attention and you tell a lie that's like a little trip you know not necessarily that the lie is little but the trip or the action of uh not paying attention and making that mistake in lying you know if you repent would be little um so we have to be cautious we always have to be paying attention Ariel, are you paying attention because it doesn't seem like you're paying attention right now it seems like you're off in la la land and that's what satan's waiting for because you have to pay attention to these lessons because when we come back and ask you questions you can't answer the questions because you weren't attentive during the lessons so focus on the lesson okay anyways john the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they may have life and they may have it more money. Who comes that we may have life? Ariel. Who's coming that we may have life? So the enemy is Satan. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And then it's, I have come that they may have life and that they may yeah. have Yes. Yeshua. Yeshua came and he gave himself that we may have life. Yes. All right. Every day that you live, it's a fight for your soul. You have to understand that. So we live this life, but in a different dimension, right, there's a spiritual dimension. And in a spiritual dimension, it's a war. And it's a fight constantly. There are angels fighting to keep us safe. There are fighting to protect us. And it's hard to kind of understand that maybe now that you guys are little, but when you get older, you will understand that this is the there's constant spiritual warfare. And there's even a story about that in the book of Daniel. I believe, where Daniel prayed, are you listening? Where Daniel prayed, and he was praying for rain, I think. And it didn't rain, right? For three years, but then finally rain came, and the angel came. He's like, hey, we heard from the beginning. We were trying to get to you, and we were trying to bring the rain, but we had to fight our way here, right? So there's spiritual warfare going on. So every day is a fight for your soul. And sometimes it's hard to make the right choices. Like every time I go out in, in public, sometimes people cut me off and they do mean things to me. And I want to do mean things to him, to them. But what does the Bible say about doing mean things? Treat others how you want to be treated. Right. And what do you think? Is, do you have experiences like that where you're out there and you're trying to do the right thing, but it's hard to do the right thing sometimes? Probably. Yeah. Especially as a Especially the Lord. So don't worry about that because even the apostles understand that we war against our flesh, right? Paul said in Romans 7, 19 through 25, For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. So the good that he wants to do, he doesn't do. The evil that he doesn't want to do, that's the things that he does. Now, if I would do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, right? We're all born into sin and shaped in iniquity. I find that a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yah after the inward man, but I see another law within my members warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity of law of sin, captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? So please stop. Sit up. Put your feet on the floor. Thank you. Uh, deliver me from this body of death. So I want to do the right thing. I want to be nice to this little girl. And this little girl kicks me. And I'm like, oh, she kicked me. And I want to punch her in her face. So when I'm trying to do right, evil's here, right? Satan here, kick her, kick her hard, punch her in the face, beat her up. But that's not what y'all wants me to do, right? He doesn't want me to beat her up. I really want to beat her up. But what does y'all want me to do, Kamari? Be nice to her. Be nice to her. What else does y'all want me to do? To um, let her know that's not nice and I don't like. Yeah, to teach, we can teach her the ways of the Almighty, right? Mm -hmm. Good answers, guys. When you want to do the right thing, but your mind and your body still want to do the wrong thing, it's really hard. So don't feel bad that sometimes we don't always make the right choices because we all deal with it and sometimes we fall. Like I had a situation today. Somebody did something that I didn't like. Let's be careful with your Bible. I told them, I said, hey, 
that's not cool. You need to take down. They posted something. And I said, that's not cool. You need to take that post down. Right? And they, they didn't say anything. I saw they took the post down. I said, thank you. Right? And they said, we'll talk about it after the Sabbath. Me being in the flesh and my pride, I was like, there ain't nothing to talk about. I said what I said. What you did was not okay. You took it down. We're done. There's no conversation that need to be had. But that wasn't the right thing to do because the scripture says, let brotherly love continue. So if I, if I told her, if I came to her and said, you offended me, I need to allow her the opportunity to talk to me too. I can't just shut the wall and say, I don't feel like talking. That's what my flesh wants to do, but that's not the righteous thing to do. If I ask you to sit up again, when we get done, you will take a nap. And I will make you stay asleep after the Sabbath, or I'll make you stay in bed after the Sabbath, which means you will not get on your tablet. Please sit up. If you're that tired, then you're going to take a nap. I'm not tired. I'm just saying that. I don't want you to lay down. That's not proper. You don't, when you're at school, do you lay down on your desk while your teacher's trying to instruct you? Okay. So sit up while we're talking. Okay. Ephesians 6, 11 through 12. So it says, put on the whole armor of Yah. And our whole armor is reading, praying, fasting, right? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So if I'm prayed up and I'm read up and I'm fasted up, I means I'm spiritually strong and I'm spiritually healthy. So when Satan comes to me and he says, a, a text her and say, we ain't nothing to talk about, right? When he does that to me, I say, no, Satan, block, 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 block. Come on, wait, block Satan. Block, 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 block. Come on, block him. He coming at you, Ario, you boop, boop. Oh, Ariel can get hit, man. Man, she not she not prayed up. She not, you ready, Kamari? Block Satan. Block Satan. Block, 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 block. You ready? Ready? Oh, man. Y'all done beat up saying he couldn't get through. You guys are prayed up. All right. So, anyways, so when we put on the whole armor of God, right, when we're prayed up and we're fasting and we're reading, it says... When he comes against us, we'll be able to fight against him, right? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. When we're, getting, when we're in a situation where we want to sin, it's not about what we see here. It's about the spiritual that's going on, right? It's our spiritual man that's fighting. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against rulers of darkness, the rulers, the, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness and high places. So I don't say any of that to scare you. I don't want you to think, oh my gosh, there's a spiritual warfare going on and I can't see it and I'm so scared. I don't want you scared. Right? I want you to be knowledgeable. Having knowledge makes you be informed and helps you to make informed choices. Uh, what does it say? What, what's a pastor? I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but okay. Thank you, what's up? We're glad you stopped. Moving on. Right? So... I want you to be prepared. So when you see things coming at you, right, Ariel? When you're out there and you and you want to make the wrong choice, just remember that you know what? I understand what's going on in the spiritual realm, and I'm gonna make the right choice, right? I'm not gonna kick this little girl back. She deserves it. She probably kicked a lot of people, and if I keep her one good time, she'll probably learn a lesson. But that may not be what y'all want you to teach right then and there. Or that may not be the way y'all want her to learn that lesson, right? 
because it says a brother that is offended is harder to be won. So if you kick her instead of loving her, do you think she's going to want to come by study? She's not going to like you, right? If you kicked her back. So she's, it's harder to win her to the kingdom. It's harder to hit. You see the X there? Hit the X. This? The X. Yep. Yep, thank you. Okay. So it's harder to win her to the kingdom, and that is our ultimate goal, is to seek and to save that which is lost, right? Please do not bite on your nails. I just explained to you that I used to bite on my nails and mess with my cuticles, and then I did that, I would get infection in my nails. And it hurts really bad, so please don't bite your nails. All right, where are we at? Um, James 4 and 7. James is way left. Let's go. What's going on with my phone? My phone is having, what did you do to my phone? What did you do to my phone when my phone was acting up now? When you're talking to dad? Yeah. All right. Okay, because my phone's acting up now. Sit down, Mario. James, James 4, verse 7. Yep, right there. James 4, verse 7, and um, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yes, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Many of our brothers and sisters and our forefathers have had to deal with situations where they have had their faith tried, right? Where Satan's come against them. And they're having to stand up against the wiles of Satan. And a situation where they would, would have lost hope and they could get into temptation, but they didn't. Can you think of any situations of anybody in the Bible to where they had to fight against Satan, like spiritually or mentally? Go ahead, come on. Brother Vincent. No, in the Bible. Oh, in can you think of anybody? What about Daniel in the lion's den? Remember Daniel, where he went, uh, where the the um, the king's men or whatever didn't like Daniel, so they made the no. King. It's because um that he was praying to y'all, and they didn't want nobody else praying to y'all, so they put him in the lion's den. Yeah, they they knew that Daniel wouldn't stop praying because they knew Daniel's faith was strong, so they were trying to they were trying to make Daniel to stop, right? And because Daniel didn't stop, he got found in lines, and that's right, Ariel. So that's that's a great example of how somebody who had their faith tried, right? Did he do good? Yeah, right? Because he didn't stop praying. Kamari, please cover your mouth. Can you think of anybody else? Um There's lots of stories. Yes, I know. Um who is it? Well in Genesis, his brother. Moses? No. Genesis. Abraham, no. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Okay. Who had their faith tried with Cain and Abel? Cain. Cain, and did he do good or did he do bad? bad? He did bad, right? Because he had an opportunity to bring a correct sacrifice to the Almighty, but he didn't, right? He killed his brother. Mom, I think you said something about um. I think you um. I think you did in a video in the room that um, um somebody said go and do something, but um I think um Satan came to me. Probably, I can't think of specifically. Can you think of anything else from that that story that I told you? And then he said, um. I'm not going to do it because I think it was the Sabbath. I don't remember. Ooh, 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 I think I know what she's talking about. Where, like, the dad told them to go and um, go buy some stuff for the dad because he was sick and something. Oh, that was just a story I made up. That was just an example that I gave. But there was about Jonah. There's Jonah, the example of having the faith child. Yeah, I, I, I was about to say Jonah. Okay. So a very good example some brothers out of their faith tried is Shadrach, Meshach, and, and a sit up a go. A bend a go. 
Abednego in Daniel chapter 3. So I'm going to breeze through this real quick. I'm going to hurry up and read the story because it is in Daniel chapter 3. This whole story is talked about. Ready? Nebuchadnezzar king, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three sore cubits and the breadth of it was thereof was six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, governors, captains, and judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, and all of the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. The princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and the rulers and provinces where he gathered were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood there before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the herald cried aloud, Unto you it is commanded, O people, nations, languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbuck, sultry, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, that you fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar, or that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship the not in the same hour, be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sack, the psaltery, and, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down to worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now, what is the problem with that? That. Are you? Ooh. Yeah. Um. Y'all said don't um wash it. I high five, baby. Good and job. Don't baptize them. Don't bow down to them. Good job. Woohoo! It's okay, puppy. Sit up. Okay. What else you gotta say? Nothing. <laughs> Good job, baby. All right. I didn't get no high five. High five. I knew you knew it, but it's, you got to give your little sister time to answer it, right? So he set up this image, and he was like, when y'all hear, hear this music, boom, 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 Yep, y'all ready for this? What y'all got to be ready to do? You got to be ready to bow down, right? And so everybody was doing that. Wherefore, at the time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews, they spake and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sack, the sultry, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso fall not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. The Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake unto them and said, Is it true, O Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sapphires, the sultry, the dulcimer, and all kinds of moon, you fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace, and who is that, that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So a burning, fiery furnace, think of it like a big oven, right? So if you don't bow down, y'all ready for this? Do 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 do. If y'all don't bow down, y'all going in the oven, right? Would you go in the oven or would you would you bow down? I rather go to y'all. You rather go to y'all? Would you go in the oven or would you rather bow down? Run. He said run. Okay, that might not be an option, but you could you could try. But if you get caught, you're going in the oven. Just letting you know that. All right. So let's see what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say. Um, I do not care for what you say. Shad, Shad, yes, you're, that's from my book. That's not from this necessarily. Not, that's not necessarily from the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king Nebuchadnezzar, We are not careful to answer these, thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve shall be able to deliver us from this burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hands, O king. They got an attitude. They said, our God is able to deliver us. We ain't scared. King Nebuchadnezzar, do what you want to do. We not bowing down to your image. That's what they Yes. So he turned up the heat. So he turned up the heat. Turn, crank up the heat. Shh. I'm not turning up the heat. Turn up the heat. Turn it off. Yeah, he turned up the heat on them, right? 
So they got an attitude with the king. Um, but uh, now I done lost my place. King is the other side of king. But if not, if we be known as king, uh, fire trying to see who's the other side of the camp. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So they said, not only is our God able to deliver us out of your hands, even if he doesn't deliver us, we still not going to worship your funky statue. <laughs> because you statue killed us. Dang. Right, well, yes, because we're dead. But they was like, they were like, we don't care either way. We're still. You, you stink like some poop in the dump. You're, 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 you're yeah. Right. I, right? If, if, well, I had a dream about it, like... Oh, no. Oh, a dream, a dream. No, no and dreams, it, and no dreams. And it's about, it's about the Bible. Okay, no dreams, because your dreams are really long. No, my dreams aren't really long. Yes, they are. Okay. No. Then, no, no, on task. Shh. Later. Then, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. He was mad because they got an attitude with him. He said, I'm the king and you're going to get an attitude with me. And his form was of his vicious visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. So it was normally like, let's say normally it was like on 100. He's like, turn that thing up to 700, man. We finna crisp these Hebrews today, right? And he commanded his most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the brain fire first. Bind you up, I'm gonna throw you in the Wait, furnace. I, Get in there. I know, I know. Bind you up, I'm gonna throw you in the furnace. Get in there. Wait, I know what happened. Shh. But, um, <laughs> so this is what happened. No, I have to read it. No, no, I have to read it. No, I, I, no, I want to tell them. Why? So what, but, so what happened was when I want to read it though. But I want to read it though. But I want to read it though. But so I wanna, what happened? You see this? You see this? Let me read it. <laughs> so what happened? When they turned the heat up, all the guards got blown up by the heat. Yes, the guards got eaten by the heat. Sit, 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 sit. Okay. Then these men were bound in their coats. Come on, get bound. And their hosens and their hats and their garments and were cast into the burning fiery furnace. Throw yourself in the furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was so was urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire slew the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these, so the men that carried us into the furnace, right, they died. It was so hot, they died off top. But did we die? No. No, we didn't die because we're Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And oh, we we're still tied up. Time. Yep, we're still tied up, though. Actually, All right. no, we're not because okay. we're probably melt. Our, yes, that's true. Um, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the fiery furnace. Okay. Oh, man, we, we're in here. We're in this fiery furnace. Dust yourself off. Okay. And then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste. And he spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like, the form of the fourth is like what? Yeah. The son of Yah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes? Okay. Nope. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the oh, mouth of the burning fire furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High Yah, come forth, come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the fire. And the princes, governors, captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power, nor hair of their head was sent, neither was their clothes changed, nor the smell of fire passed on them. So not only they went into the furnace, they were all bound up, they fell in there, the, the, the chains and stuff melted off, the son of Yah, it looked like the son of Yah was in there with them, they were walking around, and they came out of the fiery furnace, and they didn't have no burn on their clothes. They didn't smell like fire. There was no char. Even sometimes, what when we when we cook with the oven, if there's something that drips in the oven, we smell the burn. We smell the smoke, right? But they went in the oven and came out, and there was no smoke. Um, thank you for doing that to my arm. All right. There goes a dog. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angels and delivered his servants' bodies that they might not worship any other Yah except for their own. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, language would speak anything amiss against the Yah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other Yah that can deliver after the sword. Then king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Okay, hold on. I have an experiment. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, hold on, sit down. 
So not only, right, did they get into the furnace and their faith was built, right? Cover your mouth. Because they stood on the principles of y'all and they had faith, they made Nebuchadnezzar a believer too. And that's why it's important that we'll always be alive. Because people will see us out there and things will happen and they'll be looking and they'll be waiting for us to slip and fall. Are you paying attention, Ariel? They'll be waiting for us to make a mistake. But when we stand on righteousness, when we obey the commandments, and when we are a beacon of light for the Most High, they say, man, I want what they have, right? But if we sin and we cut up and we misbehave ourselves, they're going to say, why would I serve the Most High? You act just like me. I'm over here partying. I'm over here drinking and smoking. What? Turn around to the table now. I don't know why you thought that that was okay. Turn around all the way. Scoop. Move your booty. Right? Go ahead, Kamara. What were you going to say? Okay. What, what are some things that you recognize in the story that stood out to you about their faith and how it was tried? We kind of talked about them. What are some things that stood out from you in the story about having faith, your faith tried? Do you have That's any comments? Stop. Understand. Do you have any comments about the story? No. Okay. Yes, pray. Okay. These men were blessed from on high, the most high saved them. But there are some instances where people have had their faith tried by Yah, but Yah didn't save them. Do you think it's because Yah couldn't save them? No. He could, but he let them go. Why, why? No, I'm not talking about just... Because he let them have their time. It's time for them to go. It's time for them to not be on this earth anymore. But there's a purpose. So God can save them, but the reason why he doesn't always save people is because he's the supreme being, right? And sometimes he needs to, what, Kamari? Um, because, like, like it's, there is a story about, like, if the mouse, like, there was a war, and, like, if he brought too many people, then they would say that they did the You're whole talking thing. about Gideon, right? Gideon? Um, uh-huh. And if, because of that, um, he split them up. So it's, like, what they, what happened? Uh, not so much. Because this is more so talking about people that die. There are Wait. people who have had their faith tried, right? Like, so let's say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They could have been in that situation, and they could have died in that furnace. Does that mean that y'all wasn't able to save them? Wait, but then no. the reason they, he could, but he didn't let them die. He was trying to, if he let them die, was that he was trying to prove a point that my servants will serve me unto death. Go ahead, come on, what are you going to say? Because, like, the what, why I said that was because on um, how they had got split up, it's like, it's, let's say, because it's time for them to die. Like, they but said. But nobody died. Well, this is a different story. So. <laughs> All right. So, sometimes y'all wants to prove, prove a point. And in proving a point, he allows people to be sacrificed. And we call these people martyrs. Say the word martyr. 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 A martyr is a person who was killed because of their religious beliefs. Can you name of some people in the Bible who were killed because of their religious beliefs? Can you think of some stories? Yes. Um, Simon? No. John the Baptist? No. Okay. You just name people. Well, John the Baptist, yes. John the Baptist, oh, that's not what you're going for, is a perfect example, right? He was preaching the gospel. He told um, Herod that he couldn't have his brother-in-law's wife. He said it's not lawful. And because he told Herod that he couldn't have his brother-in-law's wife and commit adultery, um, the, the wife went and had John the Baptist killed. That's a good example. Ariel, can you think of somebody else, Kamari? Okay, moving on. There's Stephen, right? Stephen was stoned. He was preaching the gospel, and they stoned him with, with, with rocks. They took rocks, they tied him up and had him bound, and they threw rocks at him, and then the Almighty took him so that he wouldn't even feel himself getting hit with rocks. Stephen's like one of the first martyrs that we see in the New Testament, right? But I got a big one. What? Yeshua? Yeshua. Yeshua. Good job, Kamari. That is the biggest martyr we can probably all think of, right? So he's got martyred so much. So Matthew, when he died on the cross. Yes, when he died on the cross. That's perfect, Ariel. And Kamari, good job. So Mark 15. 
and it was the third hour and they crucified him and the and subscription of the accusation was, accusation was written, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, one on the right hand and one on the left hand. And the scripture was fulfilled with saith, and he was numbered among the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou destroyest the temple and buildest thou, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest in three days. Save thyself, come down off the cross. Likewise, the chief priests mocking said unto themselves with scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. So what they're saying is Yeshua went out, right? He healed other people. He did all kinds of miracles. He brought people back from the dead. So it's like, he's up here on this cross. If you're, if you're the son of the Most High, get down off the cross. Duh, right? That makes kind of sense, right? If somebody's doing something to you, you have all the power in the world. Why not just take yourself off the cross? And like... Oh, I know, I know, I know. I know there is... Hold on. And likewise, also the chief priest mocking us, mocking among themselves with the scribes. He said, "Others himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend down from the cross, that we may see and believe." And they and they that were crucified with him re re reviled him. Right? What were you gonna say? Um, we, um, you know how this came to pass. Somebody actually found out that this would be in the Bible. Yeah, there were prophets that talked about it before. No, that. no. You remember one of the guardians had cut him, and then he was like, not one bone should be broken off. Yeah, it was, it was prophesied before, which is true. They didn't break any of them. They saw they were going to come. Okay, so he's talking about the prophecy. I don't know which prophet talked about it. There's a prophet in the Old Testament that talked to it and said, not one of his bones shall be broken, which it wasn't. So they came because the... Sabbath was approaching, or the sorry, the high holy day was approaching, and they can't leave um, anybody on the cross because the land would be accursed. They had to take the whoever was. I just happened that Yeshua was up there right now, but whoever was on the cross had to be taken down. And so they came to Yeshua, and they were going to break all of their bones because um, so they could take them down. And I guess that would I don't know if they were going to put them back up on another day and have them be crucified to death or whatever, but they were going to break their bones. But they came to Yeshua and they saw he was already dead. So they didn't break his bones, but they had stabbed him in the side, and out of the side came both blood and water. And then you see later where Thomas is like, I don't believe that you're Yeshua. And then he said, put your hand in my side, and then that way you'll believe. And then they called him down in Thomas because Thomas lacked faith because he didn't believe he was the most high. So anyway, so they broke the thieves' legs, but they didn't break Yeshua's legs because they saw he was already dead, which was prophesied in the Old Testament, which is what Kamari is talking about. High five Kamari, bringing relevant content. Okay, so we all know that Yeshua is able to save himself, but why didn't he save himself already? Because... Why didn't he save himself, Ariel? You have all the power in the whole wide world, and you're up here, and you're going to die. Why not save yourself? It's because. It's because the camera's over there. Talk to them, please, so they can hear you. <laughs> Restrain. Restrain. Hurry up, Ariel. Say it. I can't hold him for too much longer. Say it. <laughs> it's No, but you're not dead. You have all the power in the whole wide world. And you can save yourself and get yourself off this cross. Why not take yourself off the cross? Come on. Yes, they put a sponge and they, he said, I thirst. And they're like, here, drink this vinegar. If you were thirsty, you wouldn't want to drink vinegar. That's like the apple cider vinegar that I have. You know, you're like, ew, it stinks. It's like that. Okay, go ahead, come on. Okay. So, uh, what, what? Okay, you have all the power in the whole wide world, and somebody's about to kill you. Why would you not save yourself? Oh no, there you go. The most had told him that this would happen. Yes, he did know. But what kind of example would Yeshua be for standing for righteousness? Oh, I am, I am. If he himself didn't suffer the same thing that he's asking us to do. I cannot be like, this is what Lola fussed at me the other day, because in Belize, the seatbelt laws, you don't have to wear a seatbelt, pretty much. So I don't wear seatbelts. And my mother was here, and she fussed at me. And she was like, how, you're being rude. She was like, how dare you tell your children to wear a seatbelt when you yourselves are, when you yourself are not setting the example. 
put on your seatbelt, they will follow. So I got schooled by my mother at 31 years old, and she told me to put my seatbelt on like I was five. And she's dead, I do put on my seatbelt. I told you guys to put on my seatbelt, and I put on my seatbelt too. What were you going to say, Kamari? Um, it was for a sacrifice. Yes, he was a sacrifice. Y'all is not, Yeshua was our sacrifice. We no longer have to sacrifice lambs because he sacrificed himself on the cross. And now he is our Passover. He is our sacrifice, which we have other lessons on it. Go look on YouTube in the archives and you'll find our lessons on Passover. Yeshua being our sacrifice. Sit. Sit. What? No. What? Okay. I'll share that in a minute. I, I bring it here. I'll share it. Bring it here. I'll share it. Here. Okay. Anyways. Um, okay. So, y'all allows the storms in our life to make us stronger, right? The uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they were strong before, but when they came out of the fire furnace, do you think they were stronger spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally? Why? Because they saw, yeah, they saw the Most High do this crazy, cool miracle for them, right? James 1, 3 through 4 says, Knowing this, the trying of our faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. 1 Peter 1 through 7 says, That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, <sighs> might sit down, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yeshua, Amashiach. Right, so our faith gets tried now. That way, when it's time to go into the kingdom, we are perfect when we come to the Almighty. And it's interesting that Peter calls it gold, right? He calls he refers to our faith as gold. Do you know why? You don't because know? it's so precious. Yes, gold is precious. Not really that precious, but gold no, is. No, not gold. Like because the Most High made us so it's so precious to Him that we're going to go in the Most High, which He says. Okay, so Peter refers to our faith as gold, and when you look at, like, real gold, when you take gold out of the ground, it's dirty, it's black, it's, I'll have to try and find you guys a picture of what, like, gold looks like. It doesn't look pretty, like those gold bars and gold watches, it doesn't look like that at first, it looks real ugly. And so what you have to do to get the gold to look nice is you have to purify it first. You have to set it in the fire, and you have to make it so crazy hot, and when you make it really hot, they call it dross. All the impurities, all the bad stuff in the gold, it drips away. And you're only left with the real, really beautiful gold. So when you look at really beautiful gold, it's gone through the fire. Who did we talk about that went through the fire? Meshach, Shabbat, and Abednego. That's right. So your faith is purified through the fire. Their faith went through the fire and they came out what? Purified. They came out stronger. And beautiful. And beautiful, that's right. Our faith, right, when we go through the fire and we're tried and we're put in tests, like don't kick this little girl and don't send that message and say that there's nothing to talk about and don't steal those things. When we go through the fire, right, when we come out and we do good, right, our faith is purified and we are made stronger. So that's why life... And then somebody could stop. And that's why life can't be simple, right? That's why life isn't simple. That's why it's not sunshine and rainbows because we can't get stronger if we never go through the fire. We can't be the best that we can be for the Almighty if we've never been tried. If Nava never, if, uh, that's a bad example. Mm, anyways, moving on. Um, so, will you set the example? Yes. Will you raise up an example and have faith? Yes. And and make the non-believers believers like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego did? Yes. Will you have faith? Right? We have to always do righteousness because people are watching us. And when we do righteousness, it makes them want to do righteousness sometimes. Right? Anyways, if you make enjoy... Make yourself strong and shield. Put on the whole armor guard. Put on your whole armor. All right, if you guys like this lesson, this is one of the free lessons that will be in the, um, with the, uh, hey. with my book. No, 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 sit down. With my book, Three Hebrew, Three Little Hebrew Boys and the Big Bad Book of Sean Mario. It's about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. I think this is Shadrach, and this is Meshach, and this is Abednego. I hope you guys have a great Shabbat. 
I love you too. Baby boys and the big bad one. Dun dun dun. I love you, y'all. I'm back. You guys have a great rest of the Sabbath. Shalom. Tell me if I got glitter. No, I'm going to let you finish because you guys like to fight over some I got glitter on my face. Yes, you do have glitter on your face. We got to get ready for our next lesson. Oh, stay tuned. We have a lesson coming up that has to do with um, patience and your faith being tried and being through sticky situations. All right, shalom.